all right guys i'm back i think i just uh, kind of finished prematurely in the last video there's stuff i gotta do did you know that when you buy it it comes like this the gauge is not on that junk you have to like put it on so there are instructions on how to do that and i feel like that's something that someone could easily jack up like myself so i always try and follow directions um basically they say attach the dial gauge to the counter cover by first removing the nut see don't play with me removing the nut okay whatever removing the nut and the metal washer and white compression gasket from the threaded end of the dial then turn the cover upside down okay upside down okay starting from the bottom insert the threaded end of the gauge up through the hole so stick it in the hole people shouldn't be hard stick it in the hole you until the metal base rests on the cover while holding the dial gauge in place position the gasket it should rest within the cover hole so put it in there like this you see that take the little white part and put it in there and it should rest in there like that I don't know why you could technically I feel like you should just be able to keep this on here like this and then stick it through the hole you don't have to take it off because it's gonna go y'all I'm so uncoordinated this is how you should know when I do something if I say it's easy it really is because I am truly not the most coordinated human being so I'm bouncing it on my leg now. It says that this thing is gentle. I mean, is a delicate. I, I hope not as delicate. Um, metal washer and then the nut. Okay, and then do it till it's finger tight. So. Okay. she on there we ain't been there yo it shouldn't have took me two minutes and 52 seconds to do that that's that's if i if i was a little more prideful i would record this video over again and pretend like it took me less time but i mean i'm not so there you go addendum video number two how to put the daggone gauge on the canner there you go oh helpful hint to help yourself understand the operation of the pressure canner, pour four cups of water into the canner and follow the step-by-step -step instructions beginning with step six on page 13. For actual usage of the canner, follow the complete instructions beginning on page 12. Canning and on page 52 for pressure cooking. Well, there you go. Hmm. Well, y'all. I think I'm gonna just read these directions. I'm gonna pause it. Hold on. Pause. All right. Okay. So this book is actually pretty helpful, y'all. So um, as I was going through, I realized in the back, you know, because I love an index, uh, glossary, whatever, because it just helps me in my ADD be able to skip all that reading and just find what I'm looking for. So I went back there and I found the applesauce recipe. And I've been kind of scared because that's on page 26, FYI. I've been kind of scared because I got apples and pineapples cooking on the stove the pineapples were frozen from trader joe's some organic stuff and the apples we went apple picking a couple weeks ago and um they're they were okay but some of them weren't fully all the way ripe and everything and i didn't want them to go bad i bought five pounds of apples we probably ate about two pounds of them and so i've been telling myself applesauce 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 but um i was waiting for this bad boy to come then when it came, I started feeling nervous because I never canned anything before. And I guess eventually I'll figure it out and I won't be so scared. But um, I wanted to make sure that I was good on the acidic level if I mixed the pineapple with the apples. So I'm looking at this applesauce recipe and it's not even saying anything about that. It's saying to, uh, you know, like 
slice it into some absorbic acid solution, but that's just to prevent darkening. Um, I was afraid of, you know, like how long the process and stuff like that. I think I'll be straight because it gives you the option for pressure canning plus the boiling water canning. Um, and so I guess I got an answer to my question. One of my questions was, can I um, water can in this? And apparently you can water can in a junk. So for pressure canning, it says process at six pounds of pressure uh, for pints in eight minutes for uh, six pounds of pressure for pints. It's eight minutes and for quartz, it's 10 minutes. For processing above 2,000 feet, see page 25 for accommodation, blah, blah, blah. I'm in California. I'm going to have to pause you again to see. I think uh, that we're just, you know, below that because I'm in California. Um, but let me double check. All right, so I've gone through this book. Um, I attached, it walked me through attaching the gauge, it's pretty simple. Um, I actually found a recipe for applesauce. I got applesauce cooking on the stove right now. I'm going to try and pressure can it up. It says process at six pounds of pressure, uh, and pints would be eight minutes, and quarts would be ten minutes. And I'm sure there's probably some rule about how many, um, how many, jars you should have in there in order to run it so I'm going to check on that and see because I don't know how much applesauce I have I might only have enough for like one quart so um we're going to check that out because it might not go I'm going to double check if anybody knows what the answer is to that just post it below because it might be quicker for y'all to tell me than for me to be looking all through this book and on the internet Uh, I'm new to all this. I'm open to suggestions and everything. Um, basically, I'm just showing you from the beginning because mostly when you go on YouTube, all you see is people, super experienced people. And you feel like, okay, I've watched enough videos. Do I know what I'm doing? But when it really comes down to it, you kind of get a little fearful because trying anything new is tough. Like you see, I freaking went online, didn't see that, you know, online it came with this in there. I bought one, so I'm going to have to return that. You know, different things you learn through just doing. So, um, I appreciate you guys coming on this journey with me. Please comment, like, subscribe. I mean, I know there's like no videos on there. But, I mean, a little encouragement. Don't hurt. And it's kind of weird talking to yourself and not getting any response back. So, I'm going to try and pull these together and post them. And, and we'll see. Let's try for some applesauce before I have to go pick up Layla. So, oh, that looks pretty horrible. There we go. So basically, I'm just smushing this up. Um, and uh, I'm going to come back when I get it all smushed. I'm going to taste it. We're going to see. But look, this is what I was telling you guys about the fact that these joints are big. Okay. This is the sm this is the 23 quart. So that American, that American canner is huge. It wouldn't even work in my house because of the way that the burners are set up. So it's like I barely have enough clearance with with the Presto. Um, and being, you know, that my family is small, uh, the size isn't going to kill me. Yeah, chances are I'm not going to be doing a whole lot of heavy duty in bulk canning. Um, but I'm hoping to be able to pull together my pantry over the course of the next few months um, by canning different things, leftovers, making extra soup when I make it, canning the leftovers and, and so on and so forth. So we're going to try it with this applesauce. It smells bomb. No lie. It's, you know, the apples are organic. The, the pineapple is organic, no sugar added. I know everything that's going in here. And so when my daughter asks for applesauce, I can just say, yeah, and I know that she's going to get fruit, juice, and fiber. And that's it. There's not going to be any extra additional ingredients. So I'm really excited about that. So after I get it smashed up, um, I'll bring it back for can prep. All right, guys. Be back.